The iPad release drought has finally ended today with Apple announcing brand new M2 based iPad Airs and M4 based iPad Pros. There's a brand new 13 inch iPad Air to go along with the new 11 inch and the new iPad Pros are thinner and come with OLED displays. There's also new accessories including the new Apple Pencil Pro and the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pros. There's a lot to talk about with everything Apple announced today at the iPad event, but if you're specifically considering purchasing a brand new iPad Pro and a Magic Keyboard, there are six things you should probably know before you purchase. The first thing is, the storage you choose matters more than you think. The new impossibly thin Apple says iPad Pro comes in two different sizes. You can get the 11 inch iPad Pro or the 13 inch iPad Pro, and they come in four different storage options. You can get from 256 gigabytes all the way to two terabytes. And of course, that's going to cost you a pretty penny if you want to upgrade that storage. However, there are essentially two tiers of performance you can get out of these iPads depending on the storage. Now, if you stick with the baseline 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage, you're going to get a nine core CPU. That means you get three performance cores and six efficiency cores compared to if you go with the higher tiers of storage, either the one terabyte or two terabyte, you will get the 10 core CPU with six efficiency cores and four performance cores leading to probably around a 20% improvement in maximum speed. Now, we don't recall Apple doing this in the past where they're actually changing the specs of the CPU based on your CPU storage, except for when it comes to RAM. And with the M4 iPad Pros, you can get either eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM, again, depending on what storage option you choose. So if you stick with the 256 or 512 gigabyte storage options, you will be stuck with the eight gigabytes of memory. However, if you upgrade to the one or two terabyte options, you will actually get double the RAM at 16 gigabytes. Now, when you consider iPad Pro and what somebody pro wants to do with their iPad, that eight and 16 gigabytes can make a real difference in everyday performance from multitasking to the size of your art projects or video projects or whatever you might be doing as a pro user. The second thing you should know about the new iPad Pros is that there's a new nano texture option for the display. Apple has offered nano texture coating on the Pro Display XDR, the Studio Display, and even some previous iMacs in the past, but now you can get it on the iPad Pro. And the main benefit of the nano texture glass is the reduced glare that you get from everyday lights around you or using it in a bright room or just seeing a reflection of yourself in it as you use it. In the past couple of years, I've been using these glass matte screen protectors from a company called Mothka on basically all of my devices. I love them. They do something very similar by reducing the glare and actually making things a bit easier to read. Those glass screen protectors are really cheap. Usually you can get a couple of them for under $15. And if you break one or scratch one, you just replace it with a new one. However, to get the nano texture coating on the new iPad Pros, first of all, you do also have to upgrade the storage to the one or two terabyte options as a minimum. And then it is a $100 option to go from standard glass to the nano texture. I really am curious to see how it compares to the glass matte protectors that I've been using for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, I made a mistake and didn't order one. So it might take me a little while to get one. The next thing you should know about the new iPad Pros is that on the back of the previous versions, you had a main camera, an ultra wide camera, you had LiDAR, you had flash. Now with the new iPad Pros, you are actually losing a camera. So Apple is removing the ultra wide camera on the new iPad Pros. Now I'm guessing that like me, most of you could care less about losing that second camera on the iPad Pro. iPad Pros generally aren't the best photo taking devices. However, if you are somebody who does care and use those cameras on the iPad, you might be disappointed to know that if you're upgrading from an older version to this one, you're going to lose one of those cameras. It's odd that Apple would actually reduce a feature like this. I'm actually kind of surprised. But if you are somebody who regularly uses the cameras on your iPad Pro, first of all, I think you might be a myth, but if you're not, let me know down in the comments below why you choose to do that with an iPad versus a phone or another device. The next thing I want you to know is that after four years, Apple has finally updated the iPad Magic Keyboard to a slightly updated design. And I say slightly updated because it's, well, slight. There are some nice updates to the new iPad Magic Keyboard, like the new aluminum palm rest and the larger trackpad. The new trackpad is larger and it has haptic feedback for interacting with your iPad, and that's going to be nice. There's also a full set of function row keys at the top. However, on the outside of the iPad Magic Keyboard, it remains the same rubbery, grippy material that we've seen for the last few years. And I don't know about you, but I am not excited about that. This material does not really hold up to the elements, and I don't even use mine that much. So it is going to be really nice that we'll have less grime and grossness and wearing of the palm rest and things on the inside of the trackpad or the Magic Keyboard, but the outside is still going to remain pretty gross. So you're still going to see all this oil and grease and scratches and stains and all kinds of things build up on the outside of the Magic Keyboard. That is disappointing. I really thought we were going to be getting a full aluminum design iPad Magic Keyboard. 
and we did it, so that kind of sticks. The next thing I wanna tell you about the iPad Magic Keyboard is that the USB-C connection for the pass-through charging to the iPad is still limited to just power. So going through these pins, you can still only pass power through the iPad Magic Keyboard to the back of the iPad, so you can't connect a dock or an SSD or anything else to the side. You still have to have another cable coming out the side of the iPad if you wanna connect other devices besides power. Again, that's kind of disappointing, especially with the changes that Apple's been making to iPad OS and the improvements in Stage Manager and the use of external monitors. I would have hoped, or I did hope, that we would get more functionality out of a single cable connection than we have at the moment. And the last thing to mention about the iPad Magic Keyboard is that the new iPad Magic Keyboard is for the new iPad Pro only. That's right, that means the brand new iPad Airs can still only use these older style Magic Keyboards that are just the rubbery material all around and no function row key and a smaller trackpad. This is another thing that surprised me because the new iPad Air does get the support for the new Apple Pencil Pro, so why not the iPad Magic Keyboard? I mean, it's the same connector. The only thing that I can see that makes sense on that is that the new iPad Pro is super thin, only what, 5.1 millimeters on the 13 inch version. So that's going to be quite a tight fit on the new iPad Magic Keyboards compared to the thicker iPad Airs. Now I know that was three negative things about the iPad Magic Keyboard, but I am actually excited to try it out. I think the aluminum and the larger trackpad is going to be nice, along with the function rows, where you can actually adjust the volume and the brightness without having to reach up and do something on the screen or reach all the way to the top of the iPad. But overall, I am pretty excited about the new iPads. I love new hardware, and of course, WWDC is right around the corner, so we should be seeing kind of the future, or at least the next year's future of the iPad pretty soon to go along with all of that new hardware in the new iPad Pros. But what did you guys think about today's Apple announcement? Was there anything that surprised you or shocked you? Let me know in the comments down below. And definitely make sure to hit subscribe to see those iPad videos. Starting next week, I'll get an iPad Pro and an iPad Air to start, and we'll see where it goes from there. Other than that, you should definitely check out this video right over here. It's, it's a good one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time.